Hello everyone! Welcome back to this channel and welcome back to It's Review Time. This time, our topic is on aquatic and food microbiology. This material is good for licensure examination for teachers, for registered microbiologists, also applicable for licensure examination for fisheries technologists, and for national medical admission tests. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will get updated of our new uploads. Get ready with your pen and paper. Are you ready? Let's start! Question number 1. Coliforms are used as indicator organisms of water quality because A. They are present wherever enteric pathogens are present B. A testing procedure with great specificity is easy to perform. C. They are harmless to handle. D. Both A and B. The correct answer is D. Coliform bacteria are often referred to as indicator organisms because they indicate the potential presence of disease-causing bacteria in water. The procedure involved is standard and easy to perform. During the laboratory work, a septic method must be done to prevent contamination because they are not harmless. They are actually pathogenic microorganisms. Question number 2. The floating and drifting microbes are called A. Benthos B. Plankton C. Archaea D. Algae The correct answer is B. Plankton The word plankton comes from the Greek word planktos, which means drifter. Their name fits because plankton do not actually swim on their own or stay in one place like the coral. They drift about in the water, allowing tides, currents, and other factors to determine where they go. That's why they are called plankton. Question number three. Which of the following species in water reveal the presence of fecal pollution of human or animal origin? A. Staphylococcus aureus B. Escherichia coli C. Mycobacterium pneumoniae D. Vibrio parahemolyticus The correct answer is Escherichia coli. So in here, you just have to remember that E. coli is the usual bacteria used as indicator organism to indicate fecal pollution either of human or animal origin. Staphylococcus aureus is the common causative agent of skin infection including pimples and boils. Mycobacterium pneumoniae is the causative agent of pneumonia and Vibrio parahemolyticus is one of the Vibrio species that can also cause disease and can be found also in water but not used as indicator organism. Question number four. The concept of putting microbes to help clean up the marine environment is called A. Pasteurization B. Biolistics C. Bioremediation D. Fermentation The correct answer is C. Bioremediation Pasteurization is actually a process of destroying pathogenic microorganisms in certain food or beverage using heat treatment. On the other hand, biolistics or short for biological ballistics is also known as particle mediated gene transfer. Uh, this is a method of directly shooting fragments into cells. Fermentation is a chemical process by which molecules such as glucose are broken down anaerobically. Example of this is our tuba, 
becoming um, vinegar. Bioremediation is the use of microbes to clean up contaminated soil and water. So microbes used are usually those that live naturally in the environment. So you get to isolate them and culture them so that they will increase in number and then you can put them in that particular environment to remediate or solve the problem in contamination. For example, petroleum or heavy metal. Question number five. In regions of the estuary that are nutritionally poor, it is more likely to find which of the following organisms? A. Coliforms B. Appendage bacteria C. Viruses D. Fecal streptococci The correct answer is appendage bacteria. In regions of the estuary that are nutritionally poor, one is likely to find the budding and appendage bacteria. Bacterial shapes are biologically important. That is, cells adopt uniform morphologies from among a wide variety of possibilities. Usually, the reason for this is to aid survival. So, in this case, we see the appendage bacteria. The reason for this is to increase surface area. Remember, the area where they are growing is nutritionally poor. So, they have to do something in order to increase the possibility of being able to use up the limited uh, resources that they have in their environment. Question number six. The characteristic color of the Red Sea is associated with heavy blooms of blank. A. Diatoms B. Cyanobacteria C. Dinoflagellates D. Chlamydomonads The correct answer is cyanobacteria. So, the characteristic color of the Red Sea, as you can see in the photo, is associated with heavy blooms of cyanobacterium oscillatoria erythrea. So, which contains the pigment phycoerythrin and phycocyanin? Both are red in color. Question number seven. Food preservation involves A. Increasing shelf life of food. B. Ensuring safety for human consumption. C. Removing food spoiling microorganisms. And D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. And uh, this number needs no explanation. Question number 8. Which of the following microorganisms must be eliminated in canned foods? A. Mycobacterium tuberculosis B. Cochiella burnitid C. Clostridium botulinum and D. Lactobacillus species The correct answer is Clostridium botulinum. The most important organism to be eliminated in canned foods is the spore-forming anaerobe Clostridium botulinum because this microorganism or this bacteria is capable of producing a very potent lethal toxin causing food poisoning. Question number 9. Which bacteria grows in hot springs? First discovered in 1969 at Yellowstone National Park, best grow at 65 to 70 degrees centigrade but can survive at temperatures of 50 to 80 degrees centigrade. A. Solfolobus species B. Vibrio cholerae C. Clostridium botulinum and D. Thermos aquaticus The correct answer is D. Thermos aquaticus. Thermos aquaticus is thermophile which grow best at 65 to 70 degrees centigrade but can survive at temperatures of 50 to 80 degrees centigrade. 
Thermos Aquaticus has become famous as a source of thermostable enzyme, particularly the TAC DNA polymerase, and this is used in polymerase chain reaction. Question number 10. The following are rudimentary fish and shellfish processing techniques used by ancient people to prevent microbial degradation and for preservation, except A. Sun drying B. Refrigeration C. Salting D. Smoking The correct answer is B. Refrigeration all these four are actually means of preventing microbial degradation and for food preservation. Except that sun drying, salting, and smoking are used by people nowadays but were used by ancient people before. But not the refrigeration. So refrigeration started only in modern times. Question number 11. Which of the following bacterial species is bioluminescent and commonly forms a very elegant symbiosis with squid, making the squid glow in the dark? A. Vibrio fishery B. Salmonella tetany C. Escherichia coli and D. Candidatus photodesmus The correct answer is Vibrio fishery. So, here is an example of that. The Hawaiian bobtail squid has a unique symbiotic relationship with the bioluminescent bacteria Vibrio fishery, which colonizes a special light organ in the squid's mantle, and that makes this squid glow in the dark. Well, the bioluminescent bacteria do not only have a um, symbiotic relationship with squid, also it exists in other fish. And one good example is the angler fish. So the angler fish lives in the deep ocean where there is no sunlight, extreme high pressure, and extremely low temperature. Only female angler fish are bioluminescent and rely on bacterial symbionts called uh, I mean from the genus Enterovibrio to produce their light as shown in this figure. Question number 12. Which of the following Vibrio species is often a pathogen of fin fish, particularly salmon and trout? A. Vibrio parahemolyticus B. Vibrio vulnificus C. Vibrio angularum D. Vibrio cholerae The correct answer is C. Vibrio angularum. Vibrio parahemolyticus causes water diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, cramps, chills, and mild fever. So it can also cause wound infections if enough bacteria are present in the water when an open wound is exposed to water. Vibrio vulnificus also may cause diarrhea but is also associated with wound and bloody infections. It is the most severe of the vibrios with up to 50% fatality rate in blood infections in predisposed individuals. So Vibrio angularum is often a pathogen of fin fish, particularly salmon and trout. Infection is characterized by lethargy and skin inflammation followed by bloody open sores and body fluids. It is particularly problematic in fish culture facilities and can kill up to 50% of the fish population. A major cause of waterborne disease is the bacteria Vibrio cholerae, which causes cholera. Vibrio cholerae is a gram-negative, curved, rod-shaped bacterium found in seawater. Question number 13. Blank is caused by Chondrochus columnaris and Cytophaga columnaris in many freshwater aquarium fish characterized by grayish white or yellowish white patches on the body and skin lesions changed to ulcerations and fins may become frayed. A. Furunculosis disease. 
B. Dropsy disease C. Fin and tail rot disease and D. Columnaris disease The correct answer is columnaris disease. The columnaris disease is caused by these two uh, species of microorganisms. So, it is common among freshwater fish, just like what you are seeing in the photo. The disease is often associated with low oxygen level. Initially, it is marked by appearance of grayish white or yellowish white patches on the body. And then sometimes it progresses into the gill filaments being destroyed, which can lead to death of fish. Question number 14. Which of the following is a fungal disease in fish and fish eggs? A. Furunculosis disease B. Saproligniasis C. Fin and tail rot disease D. Lymphocystis The correct answer is saproligniasis. So saproligniasis is a fungal disease of fish and fish eggs, most commonly caused by saproligna species called the water moles. So they are common in fresh or brackish water. So here is um, the disease signs. So this is often noticed by observing fluffy tufts of cotton-like material colored white to shades of gray and brown on skin, fins, gills, or eyes of the fish or the fish eggs. Okay. Management control of this usually uh, best prevented by good management practices and uh, common treatments include potassium permanganate, formalin, and povidone iodine solutions. Question number 15. Which of the following is a viral infection of pinnade shrimp where the disease is highly lethal and contagious, killing the shrimp quickly? A. White spot syndrome. B. Chinook disease. C. Infective hemopoietic necrosis. D. Infectious pancreatic necrosis. The correct answer is A. White spot syndrome. The white spot syndrome virus or WSSV is the lone virus of the genus Wispovirus which is the only genus in the family Nemaveridae. It is responsible for causing white spot syndrome in wide range of crustacean hosts. White spot syndrome is a viral infection of pinnid shrimp. The disease is highly lethal and contagious and it can kill the shrimp quickly. This disease can also cause outbreak, killing the entire population of many shrimp. So the clinical signs of WSS include a sudden reduction in food consumption, lethargy, loose cuticle, and other reddish discoloration, and the presence of white spots. Question number 16. Marine microorganisms face several challenges. Which environment would have the greatest variety of microorganisms? A. The Gulf of Mexico with average salinity of 35 ppt. B. The Dead Sea with a salinity of 300 ppt. C. A deep sea vent with temperature of 80 degrees centigrade. D. The Red Sea with a salinity of 370 ppt. The correct answer is the Gulf of Mexico with an average salinity of 35 ppt. One of the limiting factors that they have marine environments is actually the salinity. So when the salinity is optimum, just like around 35 ppt, similar to what we have here in the Philippines, there can be more um, 
different species of microorganisms. Whereas in areas with too high salinity, such as in Dead Sea and in Red Sea, um, only those which are halophiles or halotolerant -tol microorganisms can survive. And of course, in deep sea vent with temperature that's very high, only few groups of microorganisms can also survive. Question number 17. What microorganisms are the base of ocean food chains? A. Zooplankton B. Phytoplankton C. Cyanobacteria D. Fungi The correct answer is B. Phytoplankton Looking at this food pyramid, you can see that the primary producers in here at the base of this pyramid include the phytoplankton. So they are the primary producers of the ocean's food chain or food web. Question number 18. Blank is another way to study marine microbes. For example, Scientists use satellites to study algal blooms from space. A. Metagenomics B. Sampling and culturing C. Remote sensing D. Marine expedition The correct answer is remote sensing. In this photo, you will see that remote sensing is being used to study the health of the ocean. So for example, in here, in this area, you can see that it is being highlighted that red tide is occurring. So this is one way by which microorganisms can also be monitored. Question number 19. To control microbial growth in a food, one can decrease water availability by the addition of A. Salts B. Sugars C. Neither salt nor sugar D. Both salt or sugar The correct answer is D. Both salt or sugar. So adding actually salts and sugar would decrease the availability of water in food. Water is one of the primary requirements of microbial growth. So by limiting the available water, you are actually limiting microbial growth. Question number 20. Blanc aims to strengthen the food safety regulatory system in the country to protect consumers' health and facilitate market access to local foods and food products and for other purposes, otherwise known as the Food Safety Act of 2013. A. Republic Act 10611 B. Republic Act No. 3720 C. PD number 856 and D. Republic Act 9711. The correct answer is A. Republic Act 10611. Republic Act 3720 is for food, drug, and cosmetics. On the other hand, Presidential Decree Number 856 is called the Code on Sanitation. Republic Act 9711 is an act strengthening the uh, strengthening and rationalizing the regulatory capacity of Bureau of Food and Drugs or the BFAD. So you just have to remember that the Republic Act 10611 is the Food Safety Act of 2013. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best and God bless you all. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So watch out for our next upload. Bye!